Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? Fabulous. It's a new month. It's a new day. It's an exciting movie star Monday with Alex Kendrick. We actually talked with Alex not too long ago. He has a movie that was just coming out at the time called Like Arrows. So the last time we talked to him was mainly about that movie. Today we're going to talk to him a little bit more about why he started doing movies and some of the other movies that he's done. He's got some great movies out there. Uh, He does a lot of faith-based films. So Alex Kendrick, our guest for Movie Star Monday today. I got a quote here from Chris Rock. It says, wealth is not about having a lot of money. It is about having a lot of options. There you go. It's a good quote. Sure. There you go. Chris Rock. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on this Monday. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with the hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Uh, I thought you'd never ask. It is Monday, the fourth day of June. We are one month away from Fourth of July, which is you know big Independence thing. So, uh, but today is National Safe Day. S A F E, all capital letters. So I wonder what that stands for. You think it's something? National <laughs> Safe Day. I don't know. National Cheese Day. I wonder oh, what that I means. Love cheese. It means day to eat some cheese. I could do that. Uh, it's also National Cognac Day. Uh, cognac. I've never had that. I don't like Am cognac. Am I saying it right? Cognac. 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 Yeah. You don't like it? I don't. Would I like it, do you think? No. You don't think so? No. What does it taste like? Cognac? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like cognac. Okay. It's National Old Maids Day as well. When I was a kid, there was a card game called Old Maids. There's still a card game Is called it? Old Maids. I don't know if they still have that. I remember your uh, aunt. My aunt. Your, your, gr- your mother's aunt. aunt your yeah. Great- was she had never gotten married and she got really upset when somebody said something about an old maid and I don't remember what she were you guys playing that game is that what it was yeah if if we ever played the game with her we had to make sure she didn't get it like yeah. we had to squeeze our cards if she was happening to grab like, the old maid so that, that it wouldn't one. come out of the hand and then she'd pick don't a different it. card because she would scratch I mean she'd get very she upset. was mentally you know challenged yeah. so she, she would didn't but like she that. would get very very angry and well, I don't know why we celebrate that day but today <laughs> is that day thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show. John and Heidi. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800 818 3967. 800 818 3967. That's 800 818 3967. Offers require credit qualification, 24 month commitment, early termination fee, and e auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. John and Heidi. Coming up, we've got your brain on drugs now. Another edition of Prison or Vineyard. Oh, I like this one. You did really good last week. You got uh, all of them right one day, and then you got all of them wrong the next day. So <laughs> we'll see if you uh, have a mixed bag today or if you get them all right. Uh, a we'll mixed do... bag. Yeah, huh? that's where you get you know some right and some wrong. But here we go. We'll start with this. Uh, Roe Ridge, Kansas City, Missouri. Is it a vineyard or is Roe Ridge a prison? A prison. Incorrect. It is a vineyard. Mm. Roe Ridge, Kansas City, vineyard. How about Blackwater River in Milton, Florida? Is it a prison or is it a vineyard? Blackwater River, Milton, Florida. Prison. It is a prison. So Heidi got one right and one wrong today. So you did okay. There's only two? Yeah, I'm only going to do two. I got a couple others. I got to save some. I don't want to run out of these. I mean, there's only so many vis- vineyards and prisons out there. Uh, if you happen to know of a, a prison or a vineyard that sounds like it could be one or the other and you'd like to submit that, you can do that right through our website, johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. Each day at this time, we talk about people doing dumb things under the influence, but addiction is no laughing matter. If you or someone you know needs help, there's a toll-free number you can call. 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline. 1-800-438-0380. And this is Your Brain on Drugs. A Florida woman allegedly driving while intoxicated defended herself by telling uh, arresting officers that Jesus drank wine and so did I. 
Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding? Seriously. Deputies say they found 45-year-old Nicole Ann Miniter asleep at the wheel <sighs> inside a silver Dodge with her hazard lights activated and her engine running. This happened in Sumter County, Florida. During a police interview, she reportedly refused to take off her sunglasses and slapped an officer twice on the shoulder. She told officers that she had taken Xanax and then later admitted to drinking some alcohol after four empty sangria bottles were found in her center console. When they arrived at the jail, officers attempted to perform field sobriety tests on her, but she kept taking, uh, talking over them and began singing Amazing Grace. She also re- reportedly threw her socks at the camera recording the test and <laughs> exposed herself to the officers. She was booked on charges of driving under the influence, battery on a law enforcement officer, and resisting an officer. So there you go. That, kids, right there is what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen. Morgan Freeman is in the news again. His lawyers reached out to CNN and asked them to retract the report. I read this. Good for him about for sexual standing up to himself. Allegations against the actor. So, but here's the thing. Is it good for him or is it bad? Because he's in the news more. It drew more attention to the fact that there were accusations. So I don't think that you could have drawn more attention to it. The lady went on every news channel she could go on. And okay. Well, I don't know. He's I, defending I, himself, and that, I think that's if, good. If he didn't do it, then yeah, defend yourself. So uh, Top Chef Gail Simmons. I've not seen the show. Have you seen the show, Top Chef? I think I've seen it once, but I, I don't Well, Gail watch Simmons it. welcomed her second child, a baby boy. So there you go. She's got a lot of great recipes now for breast milk. So I'm just kidding. I'm Gross. Just, <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just trying to have some fun. All right, let's move on. You're listening to Big Screen, Little Screen right here on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Now your scoop of the day, courtesy of 49bydesign.com. One day a security screening could include analyzing the way you walk. Researchers recently looked at the walking pattern of 120 people and say artificial intelligence has been creating, uh, created rather that can identify you simply by watching the way you stroll. In theory, analyzing your walking style could replace fingerprints or retinal scans for security screenings. What do you think of that? I you don't have a distinct like walk, each all. and every one of us. I remember you and I were talking about. I'm not going to say who it was. <laughs> we're going to talk about this. I'm not going to say who this person was, but uh, my wife and I were talking about a person that we're connected to. <laughs> and my wife said that she's got a distinct walk. And I said, yeah, she kind of does. And Heidi said, she kind of walks like Donald Duck wearing tight underwear. <laughs> I was like, you know, that's a pretty good description. <laughs> I don't exactly know why that stuck. That was 18 years ago. <laughs> I still remember that. A guy in the United Kingdom was shocked to find the world's biggest cornflake in his bowl. Measured six inches across. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hinye Lad initially thought that a piece of his ceiling had fallen into the bowl. <laughs> he saw this giant flake. He added, it felt like a rock. He says, if you tried to bend it, it wouldn't break. That is why we thought maybe it was a bit of the ceiling. Oh, funny. As it turns out, it was just a gigantic cornflake. I do have a link to a photo of the giant cornflake in our show notes, by the way. That is crazy. For those of you who want to see that. Uh, that's at johnandheidyshow.com. And look at his show notes in the section Scoop of the Day. With summer arriving right now, 52% of Americans report having unused vacation days that last year they never, ever used. So That happens a lot. It does. And so there's a company out there by the name of Wallet Hub. Is that who it is? I, I get emails from these people all the time. You'd think I'd know who it is. Yeah, that's who it is. They sent me an email of the 2018 best cities and worst cities for a staycation. So where do you think would be, in the United States, the best city for a staycation? 
For a staycation? Yeah, like you're going to stay. You're not going anywhere. I'm going to take my break. I'm going to take my holiday right here in town. Where do you think that would be? I don't know. Las Vegas? Um, Well, let's see if they made the list. Can you think of... uh, You probably wouldn't be able to tell me who the worst is because... That's kind of more difficult. But we're going to hit Probably the list Detroit. here. Probably Detroit. No. <laughs> Would you come on now? I don't know about that. Uh, let's take a look at the list here. This, again, is the best and worst list for the uh, staycations. So hopefully I did this right. Let me see here. The number one best place for a staycation would be if you happen to live in Orlando. Second best place would be Honolulu. Third best place for a staycation, Chicago. Then Seattle. Then Portland. Then Tampa. Las Vegas was number seven, San Francisco number eight, number nine, San Diego, and number ten, Charleston. So if you live in Honolulu, really be number one. I mean, really, if you live in paradise, where else are you going to go for vacation? They don't have the Disney stuff there. So that's probably why Orlando came out on the top. And it's all based on what do you have to do. So it's not just being in paradise. It's what can I do in paradise? So... Number one on the list, again, Orlando, then Honolulu, then Chicago. Now, let's look at the bottom of the list. These are the bottom 10. Uh, coming in at 182nd, this is the dead last, according to the list, All right, Oxnard, California. Never even heard of it. Well, first of all, it's called Oxnard. That's not a... Can you imagine? Come to lovely Oxnard. That's not a beautiful name. I'm sorry. I don't know what it means. It probably means something. Bridgeport, Connecticut came in second to last. San Bernardino came in third to last. Fremont, California, fourth to last. Yonkers, New York, fifth to last. Also, in the, rounding out the bottom ten, Nassau, New Hampshire, Anaheim, California, Aurora, Illinois, Warwick, Rhode Island, and Lubbock, Texas. So that's the bottom ten. I've got a link to the entire list, and then it explains how they come up with all of the different things. And if you want to read all about that, I have it all and a link to the story and everything in our show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. Do you have ideas for t-shirt designs, but you don't have a clue how to print them? Or maybe you'd like to have t-shirts and coffee mugs available to buy online with your business logo printed on them. There's a website that makes it easy. We set ours up in about 10 minutes. There's no sign-up fee, no minimum orders, no monthly fees. It's just a really easy way to put some cool items online for sale. And you get paid every time somebody buys them. You don't have to print or ship anything. Just sign up, upload your designs, and then let people know where they can get your cool stuff. More details available at Radiosavings.com. That's Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We have our Movie Star Monday series continuing right now. We have Alex Kendrick. He is a filmmaker. He's also in many, many films. Thank you again for joining us on the program here. Now, Alex, let's talk about how you got started in your career because the the ministry that you have doing movies, that's a little different than some other ministries that are out there. Uh, but I've seen you in so many different films. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we've, we absolutely love Mom's Night Out. We see, we've seen you in that. We've seen you in a ton of different things. How did you get started in, uh, in, in the movie business, and how did this all come about for you? My brothers and I came out of ministry. So uh, we're, we're ordained ministers, and we were in our local church in Albany, Georgia, and had this idea to do a small film for the community. And it was centered around you know, our Easter service, and so we were putting together this small film, again, meant for one theater in one community. We called it Flywheel. It was a $20,000 movie, and it was done by all volunteers. The money all went to equipment. We did that in 2002 and 2003 when it came out, and it kind of exploded. We didn't, we didn't know what to make of it. Over a million people ended up buying a DVD of it. It was, it was airing on numerous Christian television networks, and... We, we made uh, the movie Facing the Giants after that, which Sony picked up and put in about 400 theaters. And uh, that did so well that we made uh, Fireproof on Marriage. Following that, we made Courageous about parenting. And then War Room about the power of prayer. Now Like Arrows is about um, the legacy we leave behind as families and, and loving your children. And then we're also working on one for next year, but I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to keep that hidden just a little bit until we're a little bit further down the road. But we, we love touching on subjects that are relatable to our culture, relatable to the church, encouraging for people. We want you to have a great movie-going experience, but at the end of it, we, we don't want to just give you eye candy and a couple of laughs. We want to leave you with something very meaningful, and that's kind of how we approach this ministry. We want you to walk away having been better for seeing the film, encouraged and inspired, and hopefully uh, giving you a picture of what it looks like to, to fight in prayer, to raise your kids, to love your spouse, 
you know, to trust in the Lord at a deeper level. And so that's that's kind of the way we approach filmmaking. And you've done an amazing job. A lot of the movies that you just mentioned are movies that we have seen. I've seen almost all of those. There are a few that I haven't, but now I've got them on my watch list. But i got to tell you, it's been really cool to see how Christian films over just the, even the last five years have become more mainstream. They're uh, going to theaters and, and doing far better than uh, most would expect. Just recently, you got to be really proud of your friends, the Irwin brothers, with uh, what they had happen just a few weeks ago with I Can Only Imagine. And uh, it, it's amazing. How does that make you feel being in that industry and seeing that it's it's really being accepted and, and welcomed and, and shared all over the country? Oh, it's exciting. I remember just, you know, eight to ten years ago, uh, it was rare to see a faith film at your local theater, and you may see one or two a year. Well, right now, it's amazing to go to the theater and see, my goodness, there's a growing number of films that acknowledge God and that have great messages in them, and, and, and I'm super encouraged by that. And so I'm very grateful. And, and yes, we are increasing the quality of these films. You know, they started off kind of uh, uh, at, a, at a lower level, but as we learn more of the craft and, and the audience grows in, in number, then we're able to increase the scope and and quality of these uh, quality of these presentations, and they're just going to get better and better. I also think it's really neat that even though I guess officially the Irwin brothers and the Kendrick brothers, you know, you guys are kind of rivals, but I love the fact that you work together, and you even had appeared in one of their movies. Absolutely, you know, we're excited that the bar continues to be raised because that you know you that that's a sign of a healthy arena, meaning the more people that jump in and are learning this craft and how to tell really. God honoring stories and the bar keeps being raised. You know, several years ago we had Soul Surfer do forty million and God's Not Dead did sixty. War Room did sixty eight million. I can only imagine it looks like it's gonna end at about eighty or eighty five. So the bar keeps going up, which means we're reaching more people and that is a wonderful encouragement to all of us and we're all friends, you know, the any rivalry would be very friendly. Uh, a very friendly rivalry. All of the so details at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Uh, author, Alex, thank you again, sir. And again, if you'd uh, like more information, I've got a link to it on our social media. Thanks for listening this, to another so, Movie Star uh, Monday. something that we're able to do as a ministry, and then the proceeds that come in, we pour back into ministry. So it's just been a real encouragement to all of us. Alex, thank you again, sir. God bless you. Good to talk to you. Thanks for listening to another Movie Star Monday. In a world that constantly tells you you're not good enough. 12 easy ways to lose weight now. It's easy to start believing that. I'm Amanda Johnson. I have a new perspective on the self-help genre. My book, Becoming Enough, A Heroine's Journey to the Already Perfect Self, will guide you to find your own happiness. Learn to block out the distractions of what the world thinks and learn to be happy with who you truly are. Becoming Enough, available now on Amazon or learn more at amandajohnson.tv. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The little dot that appears over the letter I has a name. What do you call that little dot over I the letter I? I don't know. It is a tittle. T-I-T-T-L-E. A tittle. Tittle. And it's fun to say. It is fun to don't say. Don't forget your tittle. T-I-T-T-L-E. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? If you were to spell out numbers using letters, you would have to go all the way up to 1,000 before you use the letter A. So O N E T W O. I think we've said that one we before. We did. Yeah, I remember reading that. And one last fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Montpelier, Vermont, is the only U.S. state capital without a McDonald's. So I wonder why they don't have one. I don't. Montpelier, know. Vermont, only U.S. state capital without a McDonald's. Couple of fun facts, courtesy of LearnWithoutLoans.com. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with a hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Now, your grandiloquent word of the day on a Monday, Cerberitic. Cerberitic. What do you think Cerberitic means? I don't know. S-Y-B-A-R-I-T-I-C. Cerberitic. Cerberitic. What is it? It is a fond, serious, I'm sorry, a fond, <laughs> fond of sens- sensuous luxury or opulent pleasure, self-indulgent, hedonistic, debauched, and 
libertine. So it's like liking things that are very self-indulgent. That would be sybaritic. Okay. That is not a fun word to say. I, I probably am saying it wrong. Sybar- S-Y-B-A-R-A-T-I-C. S-Y-B-A-R-I-T-I-C. Sybaritic. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I even spelled it wrong once. Anyway, there's our grandiloquent word for this Monday. Sybaritic. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Now, some weird news for you on a Monday. Police reported that an enraged woman by the name of Jamie Gamble tried to rip her boyfriend's testicles off during an argument. Yeah, this this is a bizarre story. This is why it's definitely weird news. She's 39. She's accused of seriously injuring her partner. Police reported that she did attempt to remove them from his body during a physical altercation. The row took place in Canton, Ohio, and left the man requiring hospital treatment. Police have not bela- not elaborated on whether she used a weapon or oh was gosh. doing this by hand, but say that she also slapped her alleged victim in the face. She's been charged with felony assault and misdemeanor domestic violence, currently being held in Stark County Jail. Cops say that they've attended her home on numerous occasions in the last year, and at least 10 reports have been filed. So she's got an issue that just keeps coming up yeah, over, she does. And over and over. And that, uh, I hope they can seek some sort of help there because that is not good. That is bad. That's that's a bad, bad deal. All right. This has been Weird News, courtesy of 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh. Authorities say a Springfield, Ohio homeowner tried to kill some troublesome weeds with a torch and he burned down his garage. That's not good. Uh, it says here the Ohio firefighters of the Springfield Township were called in at 4 a.m. for a detached garage engulfed in flames. They learned a man had tried to eliminate some weeds around the garage. They called the accident or the blaze an accident. It destroyed the garage and it had his tools and some appliances. Uh, officials estimate the loss between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. Yikes! But got rid of those weeds and the shed. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bad idea. We had some weeds that we were trying to get rid of, and uh, we just used weed killer. I mean, I know, call us crazy. <laughs> and a weed whacker. So it's a whole lot easier. I, I could say something, but I'm not going to. Hey, so. let's just skip that. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Probably about the story of the time I burned down my shed. <laughs> In my defense, I was not trying to kill weeds. So there you no, go. you were trying to burn garbage. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. In a world that constantly tells you you're not good enough. 12 easy ways to lose weight now. It's easy to start believing that. I'm Amanda Johnson. I have a new perspective on the self-help genre. My book, Becoming Enough, A Heroine's Journey to the Already Perfect Self, will guide you to find your own happiness. Learn to block out the distractions of what the world thinks and learn to be happy with who you truly are. Becoming Enough, available now on Amazon or learn more at amandajohnson.tv. Time now for fake news or Florida. Heidi, tell me, is this something that really happened in the great state of Florida or am I making this up? You ready for it? I am ready. All right. A Florida woman read on the Internet she could leave her children at home. So she left her two young children at the house and dropped another one off at school and then went to get a haircut. Fake news or Florida? Uh, Well, this sort of thing happens all the time, but I'm going to say... Fake news. No, it is a true story. Okay. This one, that, I thought, I thought maybe, maybe you were going to try to... No, I, I, they've all been true stories lately because I haven't had time to make <laughs> up stories. A Florida woman left her children at home because she said she read she could do that on the internet. She had two young children in the house while dropping another off at school. She went to get a haircut. Oskaloosa County Sheriff's Office said a neighbor found the woman's dogs running amok all over the neighborhood captured them and took them home and she knocked on the door. A child answered to let the dogs in. The neighbor called or asked the child if her mom was home, and she said no. She called 911 to report a child home unsupervised. 
doesn't have an age here yet. Let's see if we get to that. A deputy reported to the house when the mother returned and asked why she left the kids home. She said she read on the Internet that she could. She says Florida doesn't have a law limiting the age a child can be left alone. The woman was then charged with two counts of felony child neglect. So apparently there is a law. So Wow. It doesn't say how old the kids are. I wonder. Must have been real. Well, if they weren't school aged. Yeah, under the age of school, uh, yeah. under the age of kindergarten. So, yeah, there you go. All right, coming up, we've got some good news to get to. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of The John and Heidi Show is brought to you by The John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying The John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news. And I've got some good news. Comes your way courtesy of Odiva, the monthly subscription service just for the ladies. All the details at radiosavings.com. You ready for some good news, Heidi? Always ready for good All news. All right. I've got some good news. If my computer will work with me. Come on. Here we go. All right. Here we <laughs> This is just ridiculous. You okay? I don't know what's going on with my computer. This is not good news. This is slow computer is bad news. All right. Boy stops traffic. This is the good news, by the way. We'll get back to that. Uh, boy stops traffic so he can help elderly stranger climb a set of stairs. Oh. Yeah. A young boy is being praised for the kindness that he showed an elderly stranger when she was having trouble navigating a set of stairs with her walker. Eight-year-old Morris Adams of Millage, Georgia was driving home from a high school graduation with his mom and his sister when he saw an older woman slowly making her way across a busy street. At the end of the crosswalk, there's a set of stairs, and the woman was having trouble climbing with her walker in hand. He was saddened by the fact that she was alone, so he asked his mom, Hey, can you pull over so I can get out of the car to help? His mother, of course, said, Sure. He hopped out of the car, went to the woman, and helped her up the steps. When they reached the top, the woman hugged Morris and said, You're special. Little Morris uh, is, says, little didn't Morris know, a man named Riley Duncan was watching the exchange from a nearby car. Touched by his kindness, he whipped out his phone and took a video and then sent the footage to a local TV station where viewers hailed his good oh, deeds. I love that story. His what proud a mother nice said, young man. It's touching. It's very touching. And it shows how respect and raising your kids goes along. Go, uh, raising your kids right goes the, a long way. And it's true. And it's a great little story, and you can see the video of this young man helping the lady up the steps. It's a cool story. It's really neat. And I love it when people share stuff like this. If you come across a good story, like something that's good news, you can submit that and send it to us, and we would probably use it on the air. I can't think of a single time somebody submitted a good news story that we didn't use. Unless, of course, somehow I lost it. But uh, if I did, I apologize. But if you come across something good, you can share that with us at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Time now for the bonus break on the John and Heidi Show podcast. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show. we got a special month going on. This whole month of June is National Camping Month. And on the line right now, we have Don Ditzhazy. And Don is with a company called Keystone Meats. We talked to him quite a bit about a lot of fun things. Don, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. You guys know how to celebrate because we always have different celebrations that we're talking about. And National Camping Month is this whole month. So let's talk about some fun things people could do to celebrate National Camping Month. You know, it's interesting because we think of June with the warmth and everything as we start getting into summer as camping. But many, many people obviously camp all year long. But I think June is a little bit easier. You know, when you have 40 million people going camping every year, you have a lot of people out there. You know, and at Keystone, we like to, our, our our big mantra at Keystone Meats is, let's bring the family back together. And this is one of those ways. Uh, you get out in the wilderness, you, it's very hard, but you let go technology and the phones and things like that. Uh, and you get back to nature, as corny as that might sound, but really, you kind of focus on 
um, your family, your friends, and kind of uh, relaxing and get your head squared away, I guess. And, and it's, you know, I think now more than ever, it's a good idea to be able to unplug once in a while, whether that's physically unplugging and not having electricity and not having your phone and not having your computer, or if it's even just, you know, maybe not physically unplugging all of that, but, you know, kind of scaling things down. It's a good idea to unplug once in a while and just kind of recharge the batteries. Yeah, you know, there's been studies that show that if you um, uh, take a step away from technology for just one week, it resets your biological clock and helps you to readjust your sleep patterns, which is kind of interesting. And, and speaking of that, too, you know, this is an old, I don't know if it's a old wives' tale or anything, but they say, well, crickets can actually help you determine the temperature. So you don't have to look at your phone to see what the temperature is. You can... Now count the number of chirps you hear in 14 seconds. Add 40 to that number, and that's the temperature, which is, you know, that's really old school, isn't it, when you yeah. start doing that. But it's just a little fun things like that, which, of course, works way, uh, works well and plays well with a kid yeah. as you're out in the, out in the campsites. That's really cool. I, I'll have to try that now uh, to check the temperature and see if my crickets in my neighborhood are good meteorologists here. So. <laughs> there we go. There we go. National Camping Month, the whole month of June. Do you have any other fun camping facts for us, Don? Well, you know, just uh, to, to gear up and people, um, having camping, you know, a list ready to go is, uh, you know, it's obvious to us, but it's that last second thing going, oh, I need this. Oh, you know, I've, I've done camping before with kids and forgot pillows, you know, and things like this. Oh, so yeah. I started doing a list and go, okay, we need obviously the, 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 uh, the tent, the pole, and extra stakes and things like that. But, you know, it always rained when I went camping. Um, so we always started just, maybe that was the, the, uh, uh, doing rain gear and everything. It was like, well, you bring rain gear, it's going to rain, but really prepare for things like that. And I'd bring my dogs, and I always would bring a tick preventative, too. And I think people forget that there are bugs out there and bug spray and things like that that you really need to have. But doing a checklist, having that ready to go so you can just pull out and having a place with you have all your packed items, um, you know, from, uh, you know, the personal gears to portable speakers and chairs and flashlights and first aid kits and things like that. And, of course, one of the things I'd like uh, to, to say, you know what, you don't have to bring a bunch of pots and pans and things like that. Bring one cast iron skillet yeah. you know, so you can do everything, do one meal and all your meals in there. And cast iron's great because you don't have to scrub it out. You just kind of wipe it out. you got to oil it before you use it over campfire. But it's fun. And plus, it's that one skillet for almost every single of your meals you can put... Uh, uh, a meal in it and cook it for your family. And the thing that's really nice, you were talking about that checklist. If you uh, if you want to make it simple, instead of bringing a bunch of food that you need to keep cold, and now oh hey we got to have ice for that food to keep the food cold, and now we got to have a cooler to put the ice in to keep that food cold. You guys make it really easy at Keystone Meats. It's in a can. It doesn't have to be refrigerated. You can leave it, you know, with without refrigeration, and it's just fine. Oh, exactly. You know, in all our uh, premium meats are yes, in a can and they're in pre-cooked or oh, I'm sorry, all fully cooked. It has only two ingredients: meat and sea salt. So it's not a lot of preservatives or anything. And you're exact now. Yes, you have to bring that can opener, um, or you're going to have to be a MacGyver type thing to try to open it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you pack a couple of those cans away. And you have very simple meals. And, and you know, on our website, KeystoneMeats.com, we have skillet, um, you know, talking about that cast iron, but one skillet um, meals, you know. So you have, you know, a can of potatoes, a can of corn, and, and things like that, and Keystone Meats, and you make that meal in that skillet. And, it, again, clean up, and you kind of condense what you bring. And you don't have to bring a lot of frozen or fresh meats and things like this that you're exactly right that you have to ice down. These are very simple. You want to keep it simple because you don't want to be, uh, camping is supposed to be relaxing and you're getting back again to nature and things like that. You don't want to be, uh, you know, working at cooking meals and things like that or a campfire for your family. So let's keep it all nice and simple. And, again, bring that family back uh, together. I encourage you to get out there and camp this month. It's National Camping Month. And if you'd like to get some recipes, whether you're sitting around a campfire or sitting around your kitchen table, keystonemeats.com. You'll find some great recipes there. Don, thank you again for chatting with us. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Again, June, National Camping Month. All the details and recipes at keystonemeats.com.